Hello everyone and welcome to the Green Egg Creations podcast. This is episode 59. I am Kirsty and I am coming to you from a particularly lovely sunny day on the west coast of Scotland. So, uh, it's been two weeks since I last podcasted. I have more time now to podcast, shockingly enough, as does a lot of people. Um, so I decided to get a podcast done today, but I have been frantically trying to get a project finished and bound off so that I can show up on this podcast. So, yay! Uh, two notes at the top of this, if you can hear some background noise, uh, my neighbours are out playing football in the front garden and then if there's any jump cuts it's because I've had to get up and answer the door or see to one of my three cats. What you gonna do? So, um, I have th- four finished objects to show off today. I have one work in progress. Uh, I've got a new cow to announce and yeah, that's about it. It should be a relatively short podcast. She says very positively but not quite confidently. Um, yeah, we'll just jump in, shall we? So I have finished two pairs of socks. One didn't require too much work, if you'll remember from what I showed off last last podcast. Uh, so these are my Lady Rainicorn socks, which is uh, the stripe, the micro stripe is from Gamer Crafting in the Lady Rainicorn base and this is on a sparkle base. Uh, I really really like it, I like how it is micro striping Um, and I've talked about it before but I find it really interesting to see how my tension has changed throughout this sock and you can really see it here so my tension was all like was working and then it went wee bit weird and then it went back to my normal tension again. I just find that really quite fascinating and it's because when I knit this bit I was in a waiting room whereas my friend was going in to get some tests and then I kind of walked, I went, I didn't walk away, I went down to the canteen to get a cup of tea because it was really early morning. So this was, this here, this change in tension was when I was having my cup of tea and then I went back into the waiting area. So I do find that quite fascinating being able to see where your tension has changed. Uh, because this one is fairly consistent. So I can tell that this was the sock I worked on in the hospital and this was the one, excuse me I have hiccups, this is the one I was working on um, after the first one. So this was my second sock and this was my first sock. So I do find that quite fascinating. Uh, The Olive green yarn that I've used for the heel and the cuff is just a random mini that I've received in a swap at some point. I really do like it, it's a really gorgeous colour. I seem to be drawn to greens a lot at the moment, which is very odd for me because I'm more of a uh, purpley blue uh, and tealy colours or reds. So the fact I'm now being drawn to greens is really quite interesting. And I am enjoying it. I've bought some green, greenish yarns recently. You'll have seen some of those from my um, words. Really, a cup of tea. Uh, from my Countess of Blaze haul that I showed off on the last podcast. So that's pair number one. Pair number two, I'm over the moon with. But I am curious to see how much yarn I have left to see if I could maybe make a pair of shorties out of. So these are my BB-8 socks, look a bit weird just because of the way the heel is folding. Uh, So these are my BB-8 socks, this is yarn from Marcus of Fiberpunk. Um, I bought this uh, just as the skeins were ready, he then had a pre-order but that is currently closed. Um, So if anyone really wanted to get their hands on some I am afraid that you have missed that chance, I did get him to confirm if the pre-orders were closed and they are closed. So originally 
This was my travel knitting when my partner and I went to New York. I didn't get too much done to be perfectly honest but when I came back I just kind of flew into them because I do my socks on a 9 inch circular and I find that I can actually be really quite proficient with my socks and I can just whiz right through them. Uh, so yeah, I am absolutely in love with these. But what I'm doing just now is any sock, I say any sock, any socks that I make this year, I'm keeping separate from my current sock pile um, so that I can either wear through what I have um, or I don't know, I just wanted to keep these ones good for a while, so it's kind of like a box of socks type thing, so you keep them till the end of the year and then you can wear them after that. But I just like having like brand new ones there ready to go, because one of my pairs um, that knit picks Felici are starting to get a bit beyond their best. So once they're kind of past their best, I will replace them with a pair that I have knitted recently. It may seem a bit odd, but it's just something I want to do. So, and it's also just something nice as well. A third finished object I'm really, really, really over the moon about, but I am still on the fence as to whether or not I'm going to keep the yarn as is, or whether I'm going to over dye it. And that is my Demetria sweater by Verity of Truly Hooked. When I last showed this, all I needed to do was finish the other sleeve. So I'm very happy to see that I have both sleeves. Yarn still to be woven in. It is still to be blocked. And I'm o I'm on the fence about dyeing it because I'm worried that it when I dye it, it would come out blotchy. I can hear my cat playing with something and I'm hoping it's not something out of my bedroom. I think it's one of his toys. So I'm really worried that if I were to dye it, it would come out really, really blotchy and just look absolutely awful. But at the same point, I have three black cats. I have one all black, I have one tuxedo, and I have a tabby. So I'm going to be picking a lot of hair off of this or lint rolling it. And I don't really want to lint roll yarn. Like already now, looking at it, I can see quite a lot of black fur on this. And I know that is the, I want to say side effect of having cats, but that's not the right word. It just goes hand in hand with having cats, is that you're, you're going to get cat hair and things, and I have accepted that, but this is my first, like, all white knitted garment. So, at least if I was to knit it purple, it wouldn't be as prominent I don't know. I just don't want to dye it and have it come out blotchy and horrible and regret doing it and having wasted all that time knitting the sweater to essentially never wear the sweater. I do hope to get this blocked really really soon. Um, I might actually make it this afternoon's uh, mission to block it. Uh, I have a towel already to help roll out some of the excess. Hello little lady. Um, that's one of my cats by the way. I call her little lady. She's my only girl. But she is a weird one. She really likes attention on her time. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and make that my afternoon mission is to get that blocked. I also need to get my worsted weight boxy blocked and I need to get the next thing I'm about to show off blocked. So my fourth finished object you have not even seen as a work in progress. If you follow me on Instagram you might have seen my post about a new yarn combination for my next cast on and that is this project. I have managed to get this finished. Oh let's see when did I post that photo. I'm just curious I'm not gloating I'm just curious to see how long it's taken me. So I posted that on the 19th of March, and today's the 28th. No, today's the 29th.
So yeah, so just over nine, just over nine days that's taken me to knit this shawl. And it's not a small shawl. So it starts here. And it grows. And it grows. And it grows. And it grows. <laughs> I'm running out of hands. So this is the Fire Nation shawl by my friend Pip who you might know on Instagram as Ramsey Baggins or you might know as one half of the Tipsy Knits podcast. So the yarn I have used in this was a 5 50 gram pack from the Yarn Badger in the Sashay Away uh, fade. I only used four of the colours because I wanted to keep the fifth one to match with the first one and make some socks. But I actually have a lot of each colour left. So the first four stripes to here is one ball. And then the next three is another. And then two in the next one. And then two in the fourth one as well. So that was in the Sashay Away colour by the Yarn Badger. I don't think she does it anymore. I think it was a one-off and I was really lucky to snag it. And then the red that you're seeing throughout the blocks and then the lace at the end is one of my hand dyes. So I literally just got this finished and bound off before I started recording. And I'm really really happy with it. It's such a nice big shawl. It's going to look amazing when it's blocked and it's certainly going to be the big hug that I wanted. Because that's what I was in the mood for. I was in the mood to knit a hug essentially. Because it was at the start of the lockdown here in the UK and I just wanted something Protective, essentially. I'm really happy with it. I'm really, really happy with it. I don't know if I'm going to keep it for myself. Um, I seem to have started this wanting to knit a whole bunch of stuff, regardless of whether I even want it, and then pop it in, in a cupboard, in a box, somewhere, protected, um, and then I can gift them throughout the year. Whether that's birthday presents, Christmas presents, just a thinking of you gift, that sort of thing. Uh, that is the intention. And I already have a couple of ideas of things I want to make. The only thing I will not do is socks. Uh, the only person I knit socks for is my mum because I know her size. I know roughly how long I need to make the foot before I put the heel in, that kind of thing. So yeah, this might go in the box, I don't know, I'll see how I feel after it's blocked and how big it comes out, whether or not I'll keep it. The one thing I didn't like is the fact it did get over 200 stitches. <laughs> That's nothing against the pattern, it's my personal knitting method. I am a very weird person like that. Give me something where I have to hit, like knit about 300 rows, I don't care. Give me something where I have to knit 300 stitches. I care. Like, I really care. So, I prefer things under 200 stitches. Unless I really, 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 really want to make the project. Whereas in this case, I really just wanted to knit a hug. So, I persisted. I didn't mind it too much. And then I got to the lace and I was just like, Do you know what? I don't care that it's 260 stitches. Because it was broken up. And it was actually quite nice instead of just going... Oh, just plain knitting, just plain purling. So when I got to the lace section, I really started enjoying it, regardless of the 260 stitches. So, you never know. I might knit something that's got more than 300 stitches, as long as it's got something... Something I can um, memorise, like each row I could memorise. Just for that row. I couldn't remember it for the, like, six rows later. But, yeah. I might keep be converted to the stitch count if there's something that I can memorise to work on. I'm really, really happy with this. I think it's an absolutely gorgeous pattern. 
um, you can buy it on Ravelry and I do recommend it and I will pop it in the comments below. So yeah, just going to get blocked. I was weaving some of the ends in as I went. I think I stopped, yep, here is when I stopped doing that. Not for any other reason than I was giving it a good, good number of rows, then sitting weaving in the ends, giving it a good couple of rows and weaving in the ends. So, do need to do that, then I'll block it and then I'll trim the ends. Just notice some of these have come very, very loose at the edges. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. And I got it done really, really quickly, but I was 95% monogamous on that project. The 5% was for this project, which is not very much. <laughs> so it's super bulky and it is going to be the Ursa sweater. So this is a sweater project by Jacqueline Sieslak and it is very, very size inclusive and that is why I wanted to make it and the fact that it should go fairly quickly and it just looks absolutely stunning and I wanted it. That is it. I just wanted this project. There's a wee bit of brioche in there. There is going to be more brioche at the front and the back, I think, I could be wrong. Um, once you have done so much, you then join it in the round and work on the body. And yeah, I just, I loved, I've loved the sweater since the moment it came out and I knew at one point I would cast it on. But I was a wee bit humming and hawing about the yarn because it is bulky, super bulky. And if I was to do an indie dyed, it was gonna cost quite a bit of money. I was, oh, I don't have a ball band. <laughs> um, I was walking around one of our shops before the lockdown came into place. Like I bought this yarn maybe about three weeks ago. I think it was about three weeks ago. Um, and I bought eight skeins. I don't need eight skeins. I just bought eight skeins because I just wanted to be safer than sorry. It is 98% acrylic, 2% viscose, and it cost me two pound a ball. Is it two pound a ball? Um. So if you don't like it, you don't like it. Some people are really against acrylic. Some people aren't. I personally couldn't justify the cost of buying indie dyed super bulky. Or even super bulky from Knit Picks. Knit Picks was turning out it going to cost me about £40. Whereas this didn't. This ended up costing me a lot less. So about half of what it would have cost me in Knit Picks. So I don't see anything wrong with that. If you do, that's your opinion. We're all welcome to our own opinions. Just be polite about it. That's all I ask. So yeah. I... I've only given one day, not even one day, it was one evening. I literally just had this idea in my head all day. I was like, I really want to cast something on, I want to cast something, I want to cast something on. And I had the yarn sitting for this. So I was just like, you know what? I'll go buy the pattern and I'll cast it on tonight. So that's what I done one day after work last week. And this was where my 5% came from my non-monogamous knitting. And I'm really, really happy with it so far. It took me a while to kind of wrap my head around the instructions because they were like, oh, if you want X amount of positive ease, you need to put in these amount of bust, like, you need to put these bust starts in. But if you don't want this amount of negative ease and you're this size with this cup size, you need to not put in bust starts. And I was just like, whoa, too much. Emit bust starts. We'll just knit it straight. And then if we like it, but want the bust starts, we can put that in on the next version. So yeah, I don't do complicated patterns. I need a pattern to be straight to the point, super easy to follow, and there's way too much commotion going on in my street for people that are meant to be on lockdown. 
Sorry, distracted. I'm like a magpie. So yeah, we'll see how this version comes out. And then if I feel the need to alter it and, and make a second version, I might then try the bus starts that the pattern talked about. But I might need to contact someone that's already knit it to get a little bit of help. No, no, what's the word I'm looking for? There is no shame in asking people for help. So yeah, I think I'm knitting the fifth size, so the 50 inch bust. Uh, I don't have a 50 inch bust, but I wanted at least a little bit of positive ease. Oh no, I don't know whether I said negative or positive ease earlier. Ah well. So yeah, that is my work in progress. I'll stop playing with my hair. Uh, I said earlier that there is going to be a cow going on. And that is a new cow that is going on outside of the GC 2020 stash bus, which I will talk about shortly for any new viewers. So this is the GC cat hat along, which is for the brioche cat hat or kitty hat. And I personally um, will be using the pattern from Suzanne Summer or So Su Knits. And it's entirely up to yourself if that's the pattern you are going to follow or not. But uh, Suzanne Summer's is a free pattern available on Ravelry. I adore my cat hat that I knit for going to New York. And the only thing I can fault with that hat is that I didn't take into consideration that brioche will stretch and the hat is now just a little too loose. Still wearable, don't get me wrong, it is still wearable but it's now looser than I would like it to be so it moves around a bit too much for my liking. So I will be making my second version just a tad smaller, <laughs> not, put, not cast on as many stitches. I have yet to pick out my yarn, um, I think that's actually going to be part of today's tasks. I'm just looking for something so I can remind myself of dates. So the brioche cat hat, I'm just going to get comfy, oh, there we go. Brioche hat, cat hat can be knit in any weight of yarn that you want. You could do it in fingering weight, you could do it in DK. Uh, you could do it in bulky, it's entirely up to yourself. When I knit my last one, I done one strand of DK and two strands of fingering. So my grey yarn was DK and my neon greeny yellow was fingering weight held double. This time I think I'm going to do two DK weights, possibly. But I guess it depends on when I go looking through my yarn, what my choices are. But I've got a feeling that it's going to have more neon green in it. Because I have a skein of the Sudi Alpaca from Gamer Crafting, which is a DK, or class as a DK, because it's got the fluff. And I really want to make that part of the hat. So for me at the moment, it's all about neons right now. I don't know, I'm loving it. I'm just loving standing out. So it, it as in the knit along, started on the 21st of March and will be running until the 21st of May. This can be extended. There are quite a few people that have never done brioche in their life jumping in on this cow because it's going to be an amazing opportunity for everyone to kind of work together um, give motivation and support and help at the po like at the whole point of this is to like help each other and that's something really beautiful so the, com the community is going to come together on this one hopefully and people will get the support or be pointed in the right direction in the terms of tutorials or better written instructions or photographs you name it hopefully people will be willing to help so I really hope that you'll come along and join us if this is something you would be interested in. Uh, a few people have been thinking of knitting this already and this has just been the catalyst to get them to cast on which is amazing because it's going to be so great seeing everyone come together for this one hat. So yeah that is the cat hat along. 
and the hashtag for that is GC Cat Hat along. <laughs> Sorry. And um, when I say cat, I'm spelling that with a K and not a C. So GC Cat Hat along. Oh, I feel out of breath. So yeah, um, the GC 2020 Stash Bust is a year long craft along. It is not just a knit along and it's basically so that you can work from stash. I feel like an imposter when I say that given how much yarn I have bought this year but at no point did I say nobody could buy yarn. I just said let's use up what we have. So everything I'm buying from this year I don't actually plan on using apart from one or two of my Operation SJW yarns that I've bought. So I have no intentions unless, well, I bought this this year and I'll cast on. So something might, cast, something might catch my eye and it might be yarn that I buy this year. But my intention is to use yarn that I've purchased before this year. So to be counted in this craft along, this yarn has to have been in your stash before the 1st of January 2020. You could have bought it on the 31st of December and it will count. Completely will count. Even if that didn't arrive into your household until into January. I bought a skein of yarn on like the 30th of December and I'm counting that as 2019 stash. Because it was. I bought it in 2019. It just didn't arrive into my possession until 2020. Lipples. <laughs> oh, yeah. I should have brought a drink in with me. Last a couple of times I have. Um. So we bit of chatter, really. Uh, not much has been going on, just like most of the world. Uh, I do work from home. I have worked from home for the last year. And so my job, my day job is still going strong. I am very, very lucky in that aspect. I'm very grateful. Uh, I do work 35 hours a week. I've been doing some overtime. So I don't have all the knitting time people presume I have. I have had a few people say, oh, you must be so um, happy, I guess was their word, that you now get all this extra knitting time. No, I don't get any more extra knitting time apart from now I'm not seeing Scott at the weekends because we don't live together. Uh, that's my only extra knitting time is at the weekends where I would have been seeing him. So that sucks that I don't get to see Scott. Um, and I don't know when I'll next get to see him in person. We do get to video chat. Uh, but yeah, it really sucks that I don't get to see him. I'm... The whole of the UK is on lockdown for a further two weeks. And we're back. Uh, so, hit cut because one, my camera turned off, two, my door went, and three, I forgot to pick up the yarn that I wanted to show off. So, as I was saying, I can't remember what I was saying. Or when I left off more to that point. But yeah, uh, this time, eight years ago, I was under the knife. Uh, it should have been a three to four hour surgery, turned out eight hours long. They found some pretty nasty complications. And then they decided to tell me once I came around that if they hadn't done the surgery there and then, and had put it off like they were trying to do until just under a month later I would be dead. So basically I went in with really 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 horrible pains. They found an infection in my blood but they couldn't figure out why where it was coming from. They pumped me full of antibiotics and was helping the pain but I was still there. Turns out I actually had a couple of ulcers in my stomach cavity. One of them had burst and I was on the brink of getting septicemia and if they had left it that month that they wanted to do it, yeah I wouldn't be here today. So I'm very very grateful for the NHS and today that is my positive. Uh, so even though everyone is feeling like absolute crap 
try and look for a positive to get through this really dark period in the entire world's history. Let's face it, we are not alone in this. So that is my long roundabout way of saying that. Apologies if I have said something I said in the last clip, but between that last clip and this clip has been about 20 minutes and my memory is like a goldfish. <laughs> so uh, here is some yarny goodness that I have purchased. Uh, I'm sure I had talked about the fact I got well, technically three things, four things from the Operation SJW. Uh, one is still to arrive, it has been shipped as of Friday. Uh, so I'm still waiting on that, but I have received three out of my four objects. First one I will show off is my mermaid. And it's my chubby mermaid. I'm not sure how well you're seeing that because of the sparkle. So this is a chubby mermaid. Uh, there is a skinnier version, you can get them in all different skin tones, you can get them on all different hair types, you can get them just a wee bit chunkier or a wee bit slimmer. I got the chunky one with red hair because that is me, or well, normally red, but copper now. Yeah, so this is from Little Bush Baby Makes. Here is all her details. There you go. And I will link that down below as well. I love this. I absolutely love this. She thought I was going to get a custom one because I, I knew she was bringing these out because uh, Aileen is one of my best friends. Uh, I knew that she was bringing these out. I had said that maybe I'd get a custom one, get slightly shorter red hair, but I am growing my hair out. You can't tell because it's not very long and it goes super weird at the bottom. I am trying to grow my hair out after having it really, really short. So I thought, no, I'll stick with long. It's like an asper, like aspiration. That's not the right word. To aspire to have my longer hair back. Okay, so that was one of the first things I bought. Next one, I raced on to buy. I raced on to buy both of these actually. So this one is the Operation Social Justice Insert Class Here Sturdy Sock Set from the corner of craft. I loved Hannah's yarn the minute she posted it and I decided to get the sock set. So it's 20 gram sock set and this is on the 75% super super wash blue face Leicester and 25% nylon. You get 425 meters and 85 in the red. Nerdy yarn hand dyed and nodding off. I do like that. I have loved Hannah's stuff for a long time and I, try, I do tend to buy fairly regularly. One thing I did forget to show off is I had bought these a couple of weeks ago. And I bought these for Edings. I did not buy these for stitch markers. Uh, but I need to get tunnels first. I only have my... Um, actually, I don't know what you call these ones. But I want the tunnels where you can put things through it. And then I will be able to wear these as earrings. So that was Hannah's. Next one I got was Sing It Louder. And this is Knit Me Sane. I love Naomi's stuff so much. And this actually is UV reactive. How freaking cool. So this is 75% superwash wool, 25% nylon, and there's 400 meters. And it doesn't say what weight this is, but I'm going to go with 20 grams as well. So these ones are going to get knit up first because I freaking love this yarn. And then I will hopefully get these knit up. But again, not, try not trying to use the yarn I buy this year until next year, but this one's just calling my name way too much. And then I want to say my last purchase but that's not quite true. I am waiting on even more stuff arriving in the post. I panic by, I don't panic by toilet roll, I don't panic by milk, bread and eggs. I panic by yarn. So let's not have so much panic buying, it's more make myself feel better yarn. So I bought from Popply Yarn Company, who is based up in Aberdeen. They are a new company to me, this is the first yarn I have bought from them. 
I bought three 50 gram skeins. I am loving the 50 gram stuff at the moment. I wish more people done 50 grams, but I will take where I can get. And I am waiting on two skeins of 50 gram yarns from another dyer and I will show those off when they arrive. So yep, I bought Oceana, 75% rosemary and 25% nylon, 212 meters. I got Twinkle Toes, all the same specs as before. And then I got Woodland Friends. So again, like you can see the green coming through in some of my yarn purchases. With those, these arrived. So I might use these as my heels, toes and cuffs. I might not, I might put them into my mini pile. I'm not 100% sure. But I really like these. And again, I just, I really wish more dyers would make their stuff in 50 gram skeins. People don't want to always buy 100 grams. And I think that's us. I've got nothing else to ramble on about. I want to go and go through all my yarn, pick out all, pick out what I want to use as my cast on for the brioche cat hat. I also want to continue to watch live streams of Animal Crossing because I don't have a Switch and I don't have the Animal Crossing and I really, 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 really want to play it. I'll make do with my DS for now and live streams. <laughs> and uh yeah we'll call it a day on that one thank you so much for watching um all the usual spew that other people do if you like it hit the button if you want to subscribe hit the button you know the usual you can find me on instagram as grenaic underscore creations you can find me on ravelry as little dash b and there is always the ravelry group eli Hi, did you really want in? Whoa, kisses to you too. And you can always find me in the Ravelry group, Grenade underscore, Grenade underscore Creations? No, Grenade Creations Podcast. If you can't find it, there is a link down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I will see you later. Bye.